The following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can still heal you. Why? So you can just lock me up? No. Mm-hmm. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Because they knew death was better than bondage. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then, it was nothing to me but blind. <laughs> the shadows betray you because they belong to me. In the hell do you think you are? Okay, it's not working out. I'm gonna need the suit back. For how long? Forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's no, no, works. no, please, please, please. Let's just, have it. You don't understand. This, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it, okay? <laughs> so Oz, as you guys are giggling away, you and you and old Macho Man, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just I'm gonna go ahead and just completely destroy the normal script we got for the show. Um, we got Macho Man. Uh, Vandal Savage here with us. Tim and Oz is over here giggling a storm up. So what's up, you two? How you guys doing? Macho, please. You you first, sir. Bump the normal script, man. We're just flipping everything over. Look, this, this is what we get when we get unsupervised on the show. Now we're unsupervised. Oh, uh, well, then, if that's the case, I'm taking everybody's lines. But look, I'm about to go ahead and, uh, you know, say get the napkins folded for when the table is set. We'll just put the silverware out there a little bit. You know, somebody else got to bring the plates. But uh, as always, it's a pleasure to be here, gentlemen. You know, me and I was been sitting here giggling before the show, uh, laughing at regular Scott and not wanting to get in the cipher. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Not wanting to build, son. <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's sitting there. We're, we're pretty much convinced that he is, uh, he's, he's, he's plotting and scheme. There's some sort of scheme hatchery going on that we are <laughs> unaware of thus far. But we'll sure. find out later. And, and also, regular Scott, Jay put the napkins in the shape of a dove, and you still don't want to like compliment the table, dude. I mean, I'm just saying, man. You know, man, my napkin folding skill. Like I studied origami for a long time, man. I know, dude. The forks are set right in the right place. The the little spoon is in the right place where the big spoon is. I mean, the, he's like, oh, dude, this is like perfect, man. I'm saying, legitimate nine pieces of silverware deep. <laughs> The, the ambiance is great. The lighting is beautiful. I'm just saying, dude. We got crab forks. I mean, crab forks. I mean, I mean, for me, it's just just a regular table. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Right? <sighs> you know. Oh. But on, on, a, on a more on a more serious note, uh, today's topic, which was actually brought to us uh, by Macho Man Vandal Savage. Uh, we are going to discuss Justice League Dark Apocalypse War and give our top five DC animated movies that were in this continuity, in this specific universe. Now, just to make sure there are no uh, questions about it, I'm going to go over all the movies that are in this universe. So it all starts with Justice League Flashpoint Paradox because that's when everything resets. Um, after that, we get Justice League War, Son of Batman, Justice League Throne of Atlantis, Batman vs. Robin, Batman Bad Blood, Justice League vs. Teen Titans, Justice League Dark, Teen Titans The Judas Contract, Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, The Death of Superman, Reign of the Supermen, Batman Hush, Wonder Woman Bloodlines, and we wrap it all up with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. Um, this will be the only non-spoiler talk we have of Justice League Apocalypse War. So, um, 
West Coast, we'll start with you. On our ranking scale of the top of the line, the, the gem of them all, the Iris West, or the MGK, which is our middle of the ground, you know, middle middle level, that, that, that mid. And then we go to our Jar Jar Binks, and we, at the very bottom, Guardian. What are you giving Justice League Dark Apocalypse War? Justice League Dark Apocalypse War was pretty epic in my opinion. So starts at Iris West. Um, but because there was so few... I can't figure out whether or not I love that there was a lot of characters missing or I hated that there were a lot of characters missing. So I'm putting her on the Guardian's motorcycle. Mm. So, Why are you doing Iris like that, man? Because she's Iris West. She's not the Flash. Mm-hmm. We're the Flash. The Flash, Barry. We are. <laughs> See? <laughs> uh, three. Oz, what you got? What are you? What are you? What are you grading? Uh, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War on our Taken Me grading scale. Hmm. Um. It, I I I like that it was a great cinder. There were some things that I was like, uh. But overall, um. I was I was I was in it for the ride. Um, spoiler alert: f- through the slaughter of many things. Um, this is the non-spoiler part. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So I'd say I didn't want to give away too much. So yeah, th- there's like there's some stuff in there. So I think I'd give it. I'm gonna give it an iris. Um, she's not wearing the Infinity Gauntlet. She she doesn't have it. Um, but due to some things that were uh, problematic to me. Um, I think she might have Iris with a, with a bit of a mirror, with a little mirror wig. So. That's what I thought you were going to go, mirror's wig, yep. yeah. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was Iris, you're like, damn, Iris, look, oh, what, why'd you wear that? <laughs> but, 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 you, you know, you, she's still dope. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that, that's my thought. Um. I, you guys thought of it a little bit higher than I did. I gave Ooh. it an MGK, but MGK definitely has an Infinity Gauntlet. Um, you know, I, I don't, oh. I don't quite think it's an Iris West, but I do think it was really good. It was definitely an MGK with an Infinity Gauntlet. He's, you know, he's he's not quite a solid six. He's more of a strong seven. You know, dude. But when you throw the Infinity Gauntlet on there, you're giving him some stuff. I'm pushing him up to about a seven and a half, because the eight is when yeah. you start getting to that Iris West. So I'm pushing him up okay. to about a seven. Okay. I agree. Like I gave it about a B minus. He gave it about a C plus. Yeah. 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 That's about. You know. That's about right on right on the money with. Yeah, I I, I had some serious like I, I was just going mm, that makes no sense. But then other things I was like that's cool. You know, it was it was it, it was like, I was there for the ride. I'll say. Yeah, I agree. I was with him. I was with him for a lot. And plus, I give it a lot of additional leeway because Constantine is a legitimate wild card. He wears a trench coat. We've been through this. Dude, we, he has a trench coat, dude. And we so we know what the deal is, man. Okay. Well, Oz, he, he, he ain't rocking no cape. He ain't rocking no cape, dude. He's got a trench coat on. Oz, you have a trench coat as well. Why are, why are you going? I thought, we're not doing the stereotypes. I thought we weren't stereotyping the trench coat. You fought hard for uh, I'm just saying, I have a I have a black trench coat. I you know I I, you are not I, Leo either. I, I, I I'm I can I can't cast some spells. Maybe I used to, but I'm just saying, you know, respect do. And 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 I, and I don't want to I don't want to get off subject again. But I'm just saying, I, the more that I've been watching Peep Game, dude, the, the trench coats are in full effect. You know, right now. Right now, right now, they're out in public. Dude, they're, <laughs> if they're not guarding someone, they're out, dude. So, yeah, it's 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 a return of the trenches. Watch out. Oh, watch out. The trench coats are coming back. Watch out. Okay, hear me now. <laughs> hear me now. Praise me later. <laughs> okay, they're coming. Well, so that's going to be the that's going to be the, the meat of the, of the on the table that has been so lovely set by uh Macho Man Vandal Savage with the beautiful napkins. And just Those napkins are lovely. Out everywhere. You know, just wonderful. Well, well done. So we're going to rank, and then we're going to give our top five rankings. And then I'm going to ask, which one of those movies is the worst as well? So 
we're gonna have a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the 16 movie Keep Four uh, Denzel edition, so we're gonna do that again, just with a different actor. Um, I really enjoyed that. So we got a big show. So let me go ahead and set the table. This is Taking Me for Marvel vs. DC. I am your host, the regular Scott. I am here with my co-host, the comic connoisseur, the mighty Ozzy Killmonger. Oz, what's going on? What is up, beautiful people? <laughs> you know what? Some people, you just you give them an inch and they just want to take them out. You can't just change everything <coughs> on the show, dude. What do you do? What's going on, man? That was an honor of West Coast. That was, that was an honor of Vandal. Sorry, you know. Just saying, you know. All right, all right. And then we got... My man, welcome back. He brought beer this time. Macho Man Vandal Savage from the Unsupervised the Spinoff Podcast. Welcome back. Yo, yo, yo. Representing for the real himself in the young Hollywood part. It's your boy. <laughs> Macho Tuesday. Man Vandal Savage. It's clearly not Tuesday. <laughs> but I'm in here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> What's man, going that's on? Hilarious. What is up, good people? <laughs> hey, shout, shout, out, shout out the money, too. Best best intro on Defy Life. Shout out the money. Best intro on Defy Life. Straight up. He does it weekly. It makes me laugh every time. Shout out yeah. um, West Coast, go ahead and uh, promote the show, plug anything, give your, uh, your socials and all that. Definitely. We are... Uh, Again, I'm, I'm honored to be here as always. It's always great fun to be in here. The I'm representing for the unsupervised the spinoff podcast. Um, we can obviously be found at Defy Life Pods and all of the places Scott is about to mention. And uh, you can email us at unsupervised at go to You can find us at Facebook, facebook.com backslash unsupervised the spinoff podcast. Like us. There's a contest going on. We're giving away hotel rooms and stuff. It's a lot happening. What? Yes, I'm in it. It's a lot going on. We've been we've been on some real riveting stuff oh, we for the past few we weeks. Away a t-shirt. They're giving away full hotel night stays and Marriotts and stuff. We can so barely like, afford to give away a t-shirt, but jeez, dude. We just got a t-shirt. We've been trying to get that t-shirt for like six months, and Kingpin just dropped it off when he came on the show. See? <laughs> The joy of being unsupervised. We ain't got to worry about wives and kids to take care of. So we got extra money on the side. Yeah, talking about four seasons, like three nights of the four seasons. Oh, my God. I'm I'm in it. Tell me more. <laughs> she said four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be in the Marriott train. Let's go there. <laughs> it, it will be. Have, have you heard about the clarion? <laughs> right. It'll be, it'll be around the Marriott chain. We'll just We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> it's an Airbnb at, B- at Bandle's house, but it's still dope, though. That's cool. This couch comfortable. <laughs> and, like, and like Macho Man said, you can find them at Defy Life Pods. You can also find us on Defy Life Pods. You can find mm-hmm. us on Twitter at Me for Marvel vs. DC. That's the number four. You can email us at Me for Marvel vs. DC at GoDefyLife.com. You can also find the podcast, download, subscribe, leave us a five star review anywhere you get your podcast. Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Radio Public, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those places, they're going to they're gonna have each one of our podcasts. Download them both. Leave us a review. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Subscribe. Help us out. Support the pod. Support the movement. Defy Life. Yes, indeed. You know what I mean? Check out Defy Life gear. I Check out the gear. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. My bad. Peep the gear. Definitely peep the gear. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do have a bone to pick, though, with you, West Coast. Um, and, yes, I'm going to call you West Coast for this particular segment. Um, Interesting. I have a bone to pick with you about emails. No, I, I understand this bone, and I'm, I'm fully prepared um, to deal with this, this yeah, bone. You know, I understand circumstances have, 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 have shifted the, the, um, you know, the topics of, what, of what, uh, the conversation and whatnot, but... I mean, what a brother got to do to get an email read? So, <laughs> I actually even brought that up last week because, in reality, the world itself is, as we were talking about before the show, the world is currently in rehab. It's currently doing some um, mental rehabilitation, some some spiritual re- rehabilitation. You know, the the 
the pain that's going on in the country is being known. Like, clearly the injury's there, but apparently it didn't heal well. So we've got to mm-hmm. sort of reset that bone, let it get back healed correctly, and then start the physical therapy process. And so I, your your email will be one it will be it'll be read but it'll most likely be read closer to when the nba actually starts okay all right true that fair enough so i appreciate it like i said it was a bone to pick but the bone is broke so we got to fix the bone all right. i just i just want to make sure because look I, w- I wanted to make sure i was the first so i want to make sure mine is the first one read on that show it most certainly is and most certainly will be do not worry about that we got oh, you that's dope we got you. Hey, definitely check out the show. They 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 go very deep into things, and they have a lot of different perspectives from it that they come at. It's a very in depth, very very intelligent show, and uh, it's something that Oz is dying to do. And I just, it's not for me. <laughs> it's it's all right. We'll we'll have Uncle Oz on one day so he can he can be unsupervised with us. I would love I. News. Wait, 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 say that again? So you just want to be on Fox News. This is your segue into Fox News. Oh, I, I would love to be on Fox News. I, I spent, um, and I'm unfortunately, I spent uh, Thursday consuming some Fox News. Because I, I like to get the other perspective on things, and um, it, that was painful. Um, yeah, but you kind of got to. Like, I'm always yeah. a fan of, if you... If you spend all of your time with CNN and MSNBC and never listen to the other side, yeah, then your talking points become a little milk toast. And, and, and you know, CNN, CNN for whatever they can clown you too, dude. They, they, remember, the whole thing is it's millionaires protecting billionaires, but sometimes you can shame, you can shame the millionaires. So that's the thing. Yep. They choose which side they want to shame. That's just all there is to it. Although, I'll be honest, I don't know that unsupervised is going to be the best way for you to get to Fox News. Yeah. I'll be but, honest. Um, I, I'm, I'm just going to start liking, um, uh, what's her name, Candace Owen. <laughs> oh, okay. All Dude, right. Yo, man, I, I, gotta, I, I, I don't want to give her any more attention than she deserves. But, yo, do you know her backstory, dude? No, this ought to be awesome. <laughs> oh, dude, dude, Jay, Jay, th- you're you're gonna love this. This is like legit. Her backstory is, and, and I hope I hope I'm not like saying something wrong. I've I've seen many articles on this. When this girl was in high school, um, apparently, some white boys were like calling her, you know. Un- racially charged names and harassing her and made her quit made her leave school for six weeks dude made her leave school she thought that her life was threatened and the NAACP and her local community helped her and her father um sued the school district for like tens of thousands of dollars um for racially charged discrimination and I think the mayor of that town was one, uh, his son was one of the kids doing it. And so she flipped it from that to where she is now, dude. That's crazy. So she got a little bit of money and went full on Republican is what it sounds like. Dude, she, so, so like, and, but, but peep it, the NAACP like helped her with her lawsuit. And she, she went that way. She went from that to saying, oh well, there's a restaurant owner that thought Floyd, um, that thought um, George Floyd was a uh, was just nothing more than a drug addict. So um, I'm going to help them do a, a GoFundMe because they their restaurant closed because people are like you're an asshole. And yep. GoFund GoFundMe GoFundMe banned her. <laughs> As did Patreon and a couple other places. Yeah, yeah. Dude. yeah. Oh, Dude, she's right. She's those riding are, that those wave, bro. Conversations that uh, that are just just so prevalent on the unsupervised, the spinoff uh, podcast. But here on Take a Knee from Marvel vs. DC, we have some nerd things that we have to talk about. And that I was know, nerd I know stuff, Candace dude. Owens does not fall into the nerd category. She it, does it, not. It, 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 it's all nerd related, because like, dude, I'm telling you, what 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 affects one thing affects the other, and um. 
so here's my here's my daily diet. Oh no, please it, not again. If if I if I can if I if I'm watching Fox News, I gotta watch some Star Trek just to kind of like cleanse my palate and go like, oh yeah, the future can look bright. Cool. Okay. Well, That's for the nerds. Oh yeah, bro. I got you. I got you, bro. Me, look, me, me and Jay, me and Jay got you, dude. We'll hold you up on this show. We are going to hold you up, okay? All right. Um, so I'm only going to go over a couple news tidbits because I know the the going over the movie and then ranking is going to take a good amount of time, and the pick four, which we're going to do. Um, so and then after the pick four, we're going to do something off of that. So I'm only going to go over a couple news tidbits. Uh, the big PS5 reveal happened the other day, and Miles Morales will be the Mm-hmm. One of the key games that is be coming out of this Spider-Man sequel. Miles Morales is really being pushed to the forefront. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing it's only going to be a matter of time before Peter Parker is really just full on just a mentor role. Um, what does this say about Miles Morales being the face kind of of PS5 right now? Uh, Wes, uh, Macho Man, I'll start with you. It seems like that. What they're everybody right now is trying to do is get some more color in their things. Money. Like they're right. They're the, when they're doing it now, it seems like it's the correct thing to do. Um, now I'm not mad at it because I actually love Miles Morales as Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I think he's awesome. I also like what they did with the with the multiverse because in reality they could they could use all of them. We could have a cartoony Spider Ham game. We could have a uh, all Spider Gwen game. We could have yep. all the different Spider like that's and the first Spider Man game was spectacular. Like it really was the spectacular Spider Man. He was he was the amazing Spider Man in the game, but it was a spectacular game. It was fun to just swing from place to place, mm. beat up people in in cool different ways. Like I don't know if you guys are are gamers for real for real, but mm-hmm. like me and Spider Man spent many 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 an hour together. Yeah, I, and I can tell you, just at, on on the gaming tip, dude, I was very, very highly upset just because Sony has the rights to Spider Man, and they would never put it on Nintendo or um, or Xbox. But yeah, just the, just the open world of being free to swing, yeah, yeah, that that's that's still a little sore spot with me, dude. That yeah, I heard that game was great. It is spectacular. Like I have been a Sony guy for a long time, so like I I dabble in xbox mm-hmm. but i am a it, it's a lot like battlefield and call of duty for me like i'm a battlefield guy but i dabble in duty from time to time Dope. for you know with with like i would prefer god of war to master chief that type thing absolutely god of war dude <laughs> yeah you know, kratos is way sicker but miles morales in the meanwhile uh, back to your original question. Miles Morales is, uh, with the success especially of the Enter the Spider-Verse with that movie and how the, how it was both critically acclaimed and really a, an outstanding movie. Like, to this day, still one of my favorite things to just put on and watch. It is, there's no reason why they wouldn't want to ride those coattails and stay on it. You know, dude is still, he's rocking Jordans. Yeah. He is talking to a whole different generation of kids because now all of the people who grew up with Peter Parker are now older. And mm. so to be able to introduce the multiverse and introduce a new Spider-Man that may speak to the A, a younger gem- a younger demographic, and B, a different nationality, with the, especially with the, the culture and the climate that we're dealing with now, to just bring some color and say, look... There's another one. There's we got it. We got another one. That's another um, black Puerto Rican superhero. Mm-hmm. I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Oz. <clears throat> no, I, I I agree. I think um, you know um, I. So there's a couple points to this. Like there, you can take it from the Killer Mike um, stance. It's just like be careful. Be careful of the corporations. Like. Black, black splashing everything, saying here, sprinkling color on stuff, saying, hey, look at this. They're doing it because they want your money. You know, that's always something to be aware of. So you got to keep fighting and pushing even harder. So along the, along the, that's one of the lines. And the other line is, look, man, 
I think we talk a lot about like, oh, well, what if Johnny Storm was just black? Just do it. Miles Morales is not that with Peter Parker. He's got doper powers. I love the fact that he can be invisible and he's got that spidey little kind of bite that he could touch people with. I love that. Um, you know, um, so that's bringing a different aspect to it. And and you can say, there's a good argument to say that, oh, this is all part of this whole woke woke moment. But I think that, you know, what Vandal said, is relevant. I think they're still riding the wave, and here it goes. They're riding that wave of in, um, Enter the Spider Verse, but there's Enter the Spider Verse two that they're making too. So that with Miles is a great segue from the first movie to the video game to the second movie. It's a perfect win for Sony, I think. Yeah, um, it's just, I, I think it's a. I mean, I think it's a big deal. You know, it's and. I don't think it should be taken for granted who Miles Morales is replacing. Like, Peter Parker is a big, not replacing, but, I mean, who he's kind of taking the forefront from. Like, Peter Parker is a big name to kind of be, like, he, like, this is almost saying Miles Morales is the new Spider-Man going forward, you know? And mm-hmm. and I, I kind of think we're almost at that time in kind of comics and just storytelling where, I think this is going to kind of kind of be more commonplace. Like, I think in the next ten years, a lot of these mainstay heroes, I think, are going to just get are going to get pushed to the not to the, not aside, but just they're not going to be that character. Like Miles Morales will be Spider Man. I think Iron no. will be Iron will be the new Iron Man. You know, and Sam Wilson will be known as Captain America. It won't be Steve Rogers in ten years. You know what I mean? Like, I think these new faces are going to take over these mantles and it's going to be very diverse and I think it's a good thing and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Like every, everything you guys have said, I, I, I echo it all. Um, I'm looking forward True. to the changes that are coming. I look forward to seeing who steps up and who comes because Miles Morales is a, I mean, he's a relatively new character and he's gotten a lot of popularity very quickly so this is really cool to see. No, I, every everything like like you said everything like um we my thing is this I feel like it's Peter Parker you know it's it to me it probably is only to me it feels like it's easy to do that with Miles Morales and like it feels right to do that I just go why can not people do that with like ba- not Superman's harder but with, like Batman you know people will still have a Bruce Wayne in their head. Like Dick could never get that, get the props that miles gets. It's just very strange to me sometimes when I think about it, you know, but you know, to that, I, I think part of it is, I think Dick Grayson and, you know, obviously I'm a Dick Grayson guy. I think Dick Grayson is better as Nightwing. It's not that he's a hmm. bad Batman, but I just think he's better in his own persona. Whereas miles is, literally kind of filling the role you know for a newer generation I, I think that's kind of the difference I would almost compare Miles more so to like a Damien than a Dick well I wonder but do you think that like with Miles again you get some extra you, he has some extra powers he still has like you know with great powers come great responsibility motif because of his mom you know and his dad which is similar to Peter Parker's but man the only thing that Dick Grayson had going for him was that he's a little funnier and that he's more like acrobatic. So I wonder if that plays in it too. At the end of the day, Bruce Wayne still eclipses him. Where if you put Peter Parker in it, Miles is like, Miles has some chops on that dude, you know? That's a good point. West Coast, our Macho Man, what do you think about all this? I mean, it kind of makes sense. The, the idea that Miles is replacing Peter. I think is actually kind of true. I mean, look the the biggest one to look at is the Flash. How many different Flashes have there been? Mm-hmm. The difference is they've all been white dudes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like now we're getting to the point where Batman is giving way to the Batman Incorporated group, which has given us Batwoman and mm-hmm. uh, Batgirl. Like we get we get ladies from them. Then you get. Damien and all the other ones. So Batman's got a, a whole different, a whole slew of people, even going as far as Batman Beyond. He's got a whole slew of different people. The difference is that Marvel made it a point 
to make sure that an underrepresented minority became a superhero. Mm -hmm. Like, other than Miles Morales, can you name somebody of Latin descent? Because technically he's Puerto Rican. No, dude. So that, see, that's the whole thing, man. Like, like I, I love, I, I, it like to my soul. I love Black Lives Matter because it's just like it's relevant. But man, if you think about our whole nerdum, like, like, like Latina, like Latino, Latina X, and like Native Americans, they have not been represented well in like the the power game. You know? Yeah, not usually. Like the the. You can't even think of them in video games. Well, well, well check this. You you get X Men. You get X Men. You get Thunderbird, and that, that dude is dead in the first reboot of it. <laughs> and and they have to wait a while to bring Warpath in to be like, oh, this is his brother who has the same powers. Potentially, and spoiler alert. Also true, but still, <laughs> it's a it's a thing. Like you oh, can't, oh, but, but, there it, aren't it, many. It, yeah, it's it's, it's and, and and not even spoiler that that's old, but you know, like like so when when X Men had its run with like the classic X Men with Beast, Angel, you know, all them, they 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 they, re, they revamped for a new generation of X Men, which is a relevant conversation like we're having now, which was Storm, um, African about. Princess, yeah, yeah, like you know, Nightcrawler and and Thunderbird, but they killed him off the first run. And his powers are just like, he's strong and runs fast. And then you don't get until the 90s where you're like, this dude had a brother and then he joins X-Force. It's just really weird. Like there's some people that are still like, like these, like, like they're anonymous, <laughs> you know, they're faceless. And I, I think that falls into like a lot of like, like, like Hispanic and like Native American folks. Like they, they get like, you know, they... Yeah, you know, I, I you you got a Sunfire, you know, you you'll have a Luke Cage, or whatever, but like you don't really have that with that. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean another thing, <clears throat> another thing to point out though is that Marvel was also um, pretty instrumental in making sure that there were minority characters early. Yeah, DC sort of jumped on that. You know, I think one of the first ones really was like when John Stewart became Green Lantern. Yeah, and, dude, and dude, look, Vandal, you also you also get like Lois Lane gets a ray gun sent to her where she turns black. And I'm like, what, 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 what? Right, little things like, wait, she's just all of a sudden. What's that? You go to that story a lot. Well, it's because it just it it, 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 it seems it, forced. It, well, 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 think of, think about what what Vandal's saying. Marvel, they were like, yo, we, we have to do some representation just because it's it's the sign of the times and and we, we this is what we love and this is what we want to do. Where DC was just like, uh um we need to do something about this because I think people are getting angry about this kind of stuff, you know? Like people are people are now mad that they don't see themselves in any of our comics. Yeah, dude, like you you'll have you'll have like you'll have like literally Marvel say like I'm introducing Black Panther, and then you'll have DC go. Superman's um, has a sign that says "Stop the hatred," you know. <laughs> or you, or you. The best thing is this: Black Lightning back in the day was an awesome school teacher, Jefferson Pierce, really great school teacher. But he literally wore a afro with a mask attached to it back in the day, and an Earth, Wind, and Fire outfit. Yeah, dude, come on, man. <laughs> That, that'll be all for the news tip. That took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break. Then we'll come back, do a pick four, do a little twist on the pick four. And then we're going to rank and we're going to rank all of our DC animated movies from the continuity. Macho Man Vandal Savage, are you ready to give you a commercial? You already know how we do. Oh, this is really a thing now? Oh, yeah. I'm, make, I'm definitely making this a thing for any guest that comes on the show that they will be the commercial. You're hilarious. See, see, see what this dude is doing? Hey, look, I got, I got, uh, I got Scheme hatchery. hatchery. But he was ready for me. Yeah, I think he heard me. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, unsupervised, the spinoff podcast. Every week, we got some hard-hitting topics. We talk, Sometimes we're a little comedic. For the past few weeks, we've been real hard-hitting, though. It's been real, real deep, real in-depth. 
uh, giving you different perspectives, different ways of looking at the same things. It's like a fly walking over a mirror. There's a hundred different ways to see the same thing if you all choose to look that way. It all depends on which lens you're looking through. Mm-hmm. Hollywood Paul Douglas, Money Gerald, Gerald Money Hendrick, and myself, the Macho Man Vandal Savage, a.k.a. West Coast J. Hold it down, try and bring it to you every week. We're going to give you some petty party politics. We're going to give you a wacky stat of the week. And we're going to give you something that should make you think. This edutainment at its finest. Unsupervised spinoff podcast powered by the Defy Life Network. Awesome. That was great. Fantastic. There you go. Hey, look. At the least you know, it was better than Uncle Oz's commercial. I mean, but, I mean, but anything's better than my Sunday? commercial. <laughs> Uh, literally a you know, hot what you doing on smoking the turd um, in Arizona in, in August is better than my commercial. But I, that's I, so. No, no. You know what, Oz? I can tell you what's not better than your commercial. Batman and Batgirl having sex on a rooftop. That's not better than your commercial. Well, I mean, see, yeah. So There's always a silver lining. Yeah, there, 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 there is. What else you could do on a Sunday? Have sex with Batgirl on the rooftop? No, don't don't do that. <laughs> although, although, although I do have an arbitrary question for you, regular of regularist, regularist of regulars. <laughs> How'd you feel when Nightwing had sex with Harley Quinn? Yeah, I know. How come that never comes up in conversation? Or is, is are you trying to block that out? Like like somebody touched you when you were younger or something? <laughs> so before before the. Uh... Actually, I saw this after. So since I saw this after Batman had already had sex with Barbara, I thought Turner about was fair play. Um, you know, because Batman, Batman had sex with her too, right? Didn't Batman have sex with her first? No, I don't what? believe he did. No, I, I just feel like if it's Harley Quinn, dude, she's been having sex with a Joker, so you just don't... I'm like, man, Dick, I hope you were protecting yourself, bro. I mean, he, um, was, he was like borderline rape. Yeah, but still, I feel like Harley Quinn is 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 is, is a, it was like ooh. I mean, Dick Dick's had sex with a lot. He's had sex with Selena too. Yeah, but then you're you're asking Did he? for it. Yeah. When? He had sex with Selena. They've been. It's been. Uh, I've been seeing the. Uh, I've been seeing the uh, the actual comic strip going around on Twitter. No well, way. Oh, well, Playboy Dick on, Grayson, look a, at you go. A, they're on a scaffolding, and and Nightwing's like, this isn't right, or this isn't the moment. So then they get closer to the gunshots, and she's like, oh, that's it. Wow. Yeah. Well, Lady killer Dick Grayson. God well, bless him. Well, then, so this dude is going to have Batman and the Joker after him. Yeah. That doesn't that doesn't seem wise at all. <laughs> See? Like, I, I'd rather he go to John Constantine route, and just it don't <laughs> matter who it is. It don't matter what, if, what race, nationality, uh, gender, species... Like I'd rather he do that than just like he's he's taking his mentors, people, man. But can we? But can we just like think about it, man? Who would you rather have after you? Batman for Selena, the Joker for Harley, or Commissioner Gordon for Batgirl? Oh, Commissioner Gordon. Yeah, in the yeah, day, easily, easily, Jim <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gordon. Give me, give me Gordon. All right. Yeah. So. Last week we did the Denzel is that we did the Denzel edition of Pick Four. I gave you sixteen movies and you picked four. This week we are going to do it again with another actor. The actor this week, actually, I'll let Nicholas Cage. <laughs> hashtag, Nicholas Coppola. Leave Nick alone, by the way. Hashtag Nicholas Coppola. Um, no, it will not be. Fra- it will not Francis, be Nick, Nick's Francis' case, favorite nephew. I, I refuse to have to pick only four of his movies, so it will not be Nick Cage. Um, it's going to be Brad Pitt. Hey, easy, son. Okay. Easy. So here's 16 Brad Pitt movies. You can only keep four. The other 12 are gone forever. And Oz, it's funny you said A.D. Astra because that is on the list. Here's okay, the list of movies. Okay, fine. Fight Club. Inglorious Bastards, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, A.D. Astra, Ocean's Eleven, Twelve Monkeys, Troy, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Tree of Life, Fury, Moneyball, 
the assassination of Jesse James. Seven, the big short, interview with a vampire, burn after reading. Keep four, the other 12 are gone forever. Okay, cool. Fair enough. You just kind of explained to my, explained to me just then that I'm not as much of a Brad Pitt fan as I'm supposed to be. But go right, ahead. Right. Right. Yeah. What's uh, the or Macho Man? Where are you going? All right. Four of them. Fight Club can stay. Interview with the Vampire Wait, oh, can uh, stay. I, I, I'm sorry, Wes. Dude, why, why did you put Legend of the Falls, dude? I didn't. I haven't even seen like. A nine of these sixteen. Dude, so, Legend, Legend of the Falls is a classic Brad Pitt one. Well, I, I didn't okay. This list. This is the list from Movie Matrix. Yeah, that's, okay. ter- that's terrible. All right, but go ahead. Well, Sorry. Oz, Oz, let's keep it one hundred. You're not a Brad Pitt fan, so like. Oh, I, oh, I totally am a Brad Pitt fan. When he does this thing right, Legend of the Falls, he did it right. Okay. Whatever, dude. What you got, Wes? Because I apologize for Oz interrupting you. No Please. worries. I what do I got? Where was I? Fight Club, Interview with a Vampire. Let's see. See, it's it's from that point forward. I guess I go... I guess I'm going to throw in Inglorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed him thoroughly in that. See, what this is telling me is that I'm more of a Tarantino fan than a Brad Pitt fan, because I, I want to put Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in, but... Like, I feel like the the glorification of the... Oh, spoiler alert. The glorification of beating the shit out of a woman. <laughs> like, it's old school Hollywood, but, like, he seemed to enjoy that a lot. Just saying. It's the same dude who threatened Harvey Weinstein's life over Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm. And then let's see. A, I have a, righteous, a, a righteous dude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Threat his life. Uh, where was my fight club? Interview. Glorious bastards. Damn it, I'm stuck on fourth. Okay, we can come back to you on that. Ah, mm-hmm. You said mm-hmm. you sound like yours is pretty easy. What you got for me? What are your four? Fight club and glorious bastards once upon a time and interview. Um, my four are Fight Club, Seven, Inglorious mm. Bastards, and Seven and Troy. And uh, Troy was okay, but Seven's good. Seven's smart. Yeah, Seven's Seven good. was the one I forgot. Yeah, Seven's good. What's in the box? Yeah, what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? Come on, what's in the box? What's in the box? It, it, was, box. Really, it was really hard to leave interview with a vampire off, but I, I just I like Troy. I really like. I don't know why, but I really like Troy. Well, the only reason I love Troy is just that one scene where he twists that sword in that dude's neck, <laughs> and you you felt you felt that sword all in his insides. <laughs> right. I mean, he was gangster in Troy. I'll give him that. He was he was a sick ass Achilles, but this is also a story we've heard for thousands of years. And, yeah, and, and while we're while we're talking about that specific scene, I'm pretty sure that was Nathan Jones, who is a wrestler, um, and mm-hmm. wrestling. Uh, shout out to my man JD. Make sure you check out the Showdown Pro Wrestling podcast with myself and JD, uh, where we're re- reviewing matches and going over all the latest news in the wrestling world. Cheap plug. I love how he does that. He always yeah, fits it always. in so seamlessly too. Somehow it becomes part of the conversation. Yeah. Hey, regular Scott, how's the weather? The weather, well, it's, it's partly sunny. And check out our podcast here on a blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> Got it. Like yeah. there's always a way for it to be. It seems organic every time. Well, yeah. hey, listen, Oz actually set that one up for me by bringing up that specific scene where he just walks up to the dude, one one shots him, and keeps him moving. I throw you a bone every once yeah, in a while. You, you threw me a softball um, on that one. But but I'll tell you, like if you really think about it, like there's no there is no difference between Fury and Inglorious Bastard because he's basically the same Southern American in both those movies. I think Inglorious Bass is better than Fury, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, dude. I was gonna say, kinda. He just wasn't a Nazi hunt, some bitch. Nazi hunt, Nazi. I think now, that's what now, I used now, to say. You know what else? Now, now that right there is my masterpiece. Um, Christopher Waltz. He he puts Inglorious Bastards over the top for me. Oh, he, but he's always good, you he's, know. He's fantastic. Yeah. He's fantastic. 
Okay. Um, that was good. Now, take those four that you have. One's got to go. That's easy. Okay. Which which one's got to go? Um, man, I look, dude. I'm gonna tell you like this. I, I, you could take. You could say three got to go. <laughs> Okay, leave just, fight just, just leave fight club just fight one, club just one's got to go which one okay the one's got to go um once upon a time just cause I'm like whatever he tarantino don't need to have two all right macho man what you got one's got to go of your four shit what were my four interview fight club, seven, seven, seven fight club seven. uh interview can probably go Mm-hmm. That's a really good movie, though. It is a really good movie, but again, it's a it's a it's a story. We we hear vampire stories all the time. True. I do actually, I, but to be fair, I do like the. I think that is in well, maybe not now, but especially then, I feel like that was an original take for that time. Especially. Oh, and 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 Anne Rice, Rice is awesome. amazing. She was great <laughs> like, for that, dude. She's yeah. great. And Rice is amazing. I will give her that a hundred percent. But I also feel like you could recast that and go on about your business. Seven, mm-hmm. I can't get rid of Seven just because it was, Seven was the first legitimate psychological thriller that had me at the end of it going, I mean, what is in the box? Mm-hmm. What is it? Holy shit, that's what's in the box? Like, Ke- like Ke- Seven was Kaiser, impressive. Kaiser Sose's in the box? What? <laughs> right. Seven was impressive. Um, Fight Club can't go anywhere because that's just legitimate just, classic. That thing was great, dude. Yeah, like I did. The Fight Club made me start reading the books, and that dude's a trip. Mm-hmm. Like all of his books get pretty, pretty other. Um, and then what was the other one that I had? Inglorious Bastards. So I feel like the, for the same reason that Tarantino doesn't have to have two, Tarantino got to have one. Yeah. <laughs> For me, pretty easy. Troy's got to go. Um, you guys have already yeah. gone over all the reasons why Fight Club 7 and Inglorious Bastards all need to stay. Um, and just in, just so you know, uh, Macho Man, if Oz didn't throw me that bone, that was going to be my segue into my cheap plug. Yeah. If, if I would have picked, picked, picked Benjamin Buttons, he would have segued it with Benjamin Buttons, so it's fine. I, I don't know. Benjamin Button would have been a tough one to segue. I'd have had to really kind of figure something out to work that. That would have been a tough one. That would have been a tough segue. <coughs> I do want to give honorable mention to Ocean's Eleven. And, yeah, Ocean's Eleven's a tough I one. enjoyed Ocean's Eleven a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what? Y'all, y'all, y'all say you haven't seen a lot of Brad, but Brad's got some classics on his under his belt, though. But, but, well, dude, um, there's also um, was it uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith or Jones, whatever. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's a fine movie. That's fine. That movie yeah. was hilarious. He's got some, he's got some stuff under dude. He's yeah. Like he's done it. Like it's just I just when you were listing a bunch of them, I was like, huh. I don't think I've seen nine of those. Now I know we've seen him in uh, as a joke in Deadpool, but could you see him as any Marvel character though? Century. Really? I huh. think it'd be a great century. Hmm. A Interesting. Marvel character. Interesting. Oh, hey, hey, uh, Vandal, Marvel or DC? Uh, and wow, that's also fun. I don't know. Come back to me on this in a few minutes. <laughs> uh, well, actually, you know that's that's actually a really good segue when you talk about Marvel or DC. Let's segue into the DC animated world, where mm-hmm. we are going to rank the continuity movies, all of the movies that were in the universe that was created by the Flashpoint Paradox and was destroyed by the Apocalypse War. Um, shout out to Barry Allen. Well, yeah, shout out to Barry Allen for doing what he does best, ruin worlds. That's because he is not the Flash. We are the Flash, which means exactly. clearly we do what we do best and ruin Flash, worlds. Barry. We are. This guy gets messed up when he doesn't have Iris around, so that, that's a point, you know. Iris seems to be by by his side on any caper and adventure they have. I'm gonna be honest. I haven't. I I don't. I don't think I have seen Iris in one of these movies. No, not one. I don't even think she was in Flashpoint Paradox. I think the only time was she was in Young Justice, right? Was she at the house? 
Oh, mm-hmm. when the when the when all the um when all the superhero uh when, like all the all the like others, you know, the, the yeah. moms and the dads Oh, you know what? Were, yeah. Was she was she there? Like I'm not saying she was, I'm asking. I know that's a good that's a good one. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and look at that one and see. Because look, she's not but, in any of the old Justice League animated because that's Wally West. So that's not even Barry Allen. <clears throat> Wait, is she in any animated? Well, in the whole paradox, you saw the mom. So I, I was I'm wagering to say. Hmm. She was, wasn't she in there for a moment when he got back after he saw his mom in Paradox? Maybe. maybe. With another dude. Oh, that might be. Hmm. That might be okay. okay, all right. So we, we do have a sighting. We do have a sighting. Right. We got a quick little, with another dude, she was there. And that was about the, all the iris we got. That's interesting. That's really interesting. All right, so let's not let's not keep the audience waiting any longer. Let's give out our top fives, and then we can kind of dive, break them down. Um, we can give our worst movie, and you know we can kind of then we can really go on our rants and, and argue and have really good banter. Really, <laughs> there we really, go. Really fun, constructive banter. Yes. You mean like ar- like like argue? Awesome. <laughs> no, constructive. Listen, oh, great! I am trying to be positive. Constructive banter. <laughs> oh, oh! But why do that when we could just argue and just like be non-constructive? That sounds fun. All right, we can do that too. Um, no, let's not do that. <laughs> Please, let's not do that. Let me let me ask you guys: How do you want to do this? Do you want to each give our five, or do you want to go like we each say five, then we each give our four, then we each give our three? Do you want to do it that way? How do you guys want to do it? When we, we, we just, little, just give like, out our time to work with, so we can we can play around. Why don't we? Why don't we each just give out our five? Okay. And it doesn't have to be your five in order, but give out our five well, and let's, let's give each. Out our five in order. Then, if we're gonna do it, let's do it in order. Well, what I was gonna say before I was so really interrupted. Um, let's give out our five, and then from the five, we can all dissect each other's five, and we can say from our five which is our favorite or our least. So why don't we just, yes, yeah, so let's just do our five in order. Start from five and work your way from your, the fifth best to the best. Hey. Or, or are you saying that because you don't have yours in order? No, I, I, I have mine in order, but okay, I'm just so saying, why, why let's do it. can't we just do, do them in order then? Um, hey, regular Scott, whatever you think is constructive, let's do that. That's all, that's all I'm trying to do is have constructive banter. Yeah, yeah. So whatever you think is constructive banter, let's do it the way you want to do it. All right. You know what? You know what? I will take the reins. Let's do it that way. Um, macho Man. Re- regular Scott takes the reins. <laughs> macho Man. Um, oh, Oz, you know what? Before we get to that, I do – I do. this is completely random, Oz. But I just wanted to, I wanted to let you know that – Hey, hey B- Bando, Bando, this is completely random that he said. Did you, did you hear what he just said? This is completely random. Just, yep, that's happening. I want yeah, you right, know, right, right. I want you to know that you have support, Oz, on, in the Twitter world. Um, our, our T-shirt winner, Philip Darnell, um, said we, we, we kind of we chatted a little bit. I had to get his information and whatnot. And he wanted to mm-hmm. let you know, Oz, that um, he is following you now. Oh, awesome. Hey, thank to, you, man. And he's going to tell his friends to follow you. So I just wanted to – see, I'm trying to be positive. That's a positive message for you. And shout out to you, Philip. Your T-shirt is on the way. You are our contest winner for June. Hey, and shout out to Philip. Philip, you have changed regular Scott. You've made him, I won't say a better man. You've made him a man. And that's awesome. You're not worthy of a shots fired. <laughs> that, that was like legit low, low, below shots fired. Right, that was like right, a combat right. knife to the side shots fired. So, so in honor of that, I'll do a shots fire. Pow, pow, pow. No, pew, uh, you know what pew. You're to do. Pew, pew. No, pew, pew. There it is. I knew it. There you go. All right. Macho Man, what you got? Which, uh, five to one. What you got? Coming in at number five, I've got Wonder Woman Bloodlines. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I didn't expect it from myself either until I looked at my own list. This is dope. Keep keep going. Number four. Coming in at, coming in at number four. 
I've got Apocalypse War. Coming in at number three, The Flashpoint Paradox. Number two, Reign of Superman. Mm. And at number one on my list, I've got Batman's Hush. Oh, that was there. Yeah. yeah. Oz, five to one. What you got? <clears throat> I'm going from. I'm. Just, I, I'll go to. Here it goes. Number five. I have. Uh, Bad Blood. Number four. I have Batman versus Robin. Number three is Death of Superman. Number two is uh, JLA Dark Apocalypse War. And number one, because I always love the dystopian stuff, Flashpoint JLA. All right. I, I like this because all of our lists are very different. And I, I, I actually I like that. For the mo- well, there's some similarities. but uh, My number five is Judas Contract, Teen Titans Judas Contract. Number four, Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War. Number three, Justice League War. Mm. Number two, Batman Hush. And number one, Flashpoint. All right, gentlemen, let's start <coughs> and uh, tell each other where we made complete mistakes at. All right, Whoa. starting from the top, the only thing that we all have... We've got, we've all got Apocalypse War, and we've all got Flashpoint. Yep. That is, those are the only two that are on all three of our lists. Well, the well, the um, Apocalypse War and Flashpoint were just brilliant in their own right because um, you see, to me, I, I like Flashpoint because it, it kind of paralleled, it did parallel the comic, but I like to see the what if of things. I'm always a big Elseworld and what if person. War was just a great introduction to these new s- s- heroes and see where they're coming from, you know? See, I, I liked them both because I had them both on the list rather because they were the bookends. They were the beginning and the end. Mm-hmm. Like, had I not watched Flashpoint Paradox, Apocalypse War wouldn't have made any sense, regardless yeah. of everything else that happened in the middle. Mm hmm. I would have been sitting there going, wait, what? Oh, I've got to go back and watch this again. Like, I would have had to actually start over. And so that's that's where I feel like we had... I, feel, I think that's kind of one of the, the underlying reasons why we all had them there is because they literally did start and end. Just mm-hmm. point blank, period. Started and ended with The Flash. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree yeah. with all that. I think that's... That's a really good way of putting it. It was kind of what I was going to touch on about it. I mean, th- that was the first and the end, and um, it was very telling. I think it was. I think it was very appropriate. I should. That's a better word. It's very appropriate that it was the Flash who ends up kind of writing the last page of this. You know, like you said, Wes, because it it was very appropriate for that. And and, Con- and you know, Constantine even it was kind of like a wink and nod, and Constantine kind of like, you're gonna have to do it again. You know, you know what you're gonna have to do. Um, right, so, straight up. Yeah. But I, oh, I did you hit the spoiler alert buttons for this? Because we're we're at that. I point. know, totally spoiler alert. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Supervised today, by the way. So this is. Well, the the person who has control over the over their special effects should not be unsupervised. Maybe you should get your own special effects, Oz. How about that? <laughs> I'm, just <laughs> saying, I'm just saying. I I I have them, but they're not nearly as eloquent as yours are. So pew 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 pew. Pa pow pa pow pa pow. All right. Um, so now let's. Well, what's Spoiler alert. Da, 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 da. Michael, I'm glad you you brought up the, the similarities. Now let's talk about the differences in our list. Um, Oz, I'm a, I'm gonna start with you. You had the two movies which we just touched on as your one and twos. Um, let's start at your five and fours. You've got two Batman movies. <coughs> Those two Batman movies: Batman vs. Robin and Bad Blood, where we get Batwoman. And where we get an evil Bruce Wayne, quote unquote, um, we get the League with Batman vs. Robin, Damian Wayne. What makes those two movies stand out above the rest? Um, well, just in the, the 
in the terms of that, um, in that whole DC animated, it's Batman. Um, I, you get a taste of Batman, and you. I like Batman and Robin, Batman versus Robin, because it's really what fathers and sons would do if they were those two people. Like they, they. I just like spoiler alert. Um, I see them when they're fighting on the roof. Thank you. Um, do we need to keep here? Here's four spoilers. Okay. Um, so you're right, Oz. We don't need to play this again. Thank you. Last warning. The second half of the show will be wrought with spoilers. Yeah, that's even better. If you have not seen any of the DC animated movie universe from 2013 to 2020. This is the point you'd want to turn off. Watch those, and then turn it right back on. If if you haven't seen any of these uh, DC animated, what else are you doing on a Sunday? <laughs> Straight uh, up, that is a perfect Sunday, know, right here. Sunday. <laughs> That's actually how I spent really last weekend. Me and just knock it out the park. Um, <laughs> you shouldn't be surprised, sir. Fantastic. Right. Um, so again, so I I, I, I love the rooftop where they're fighting. And they're like going at it, and then <laughs> Batman's like, "Okay, have you had enough? Let's go home." <laughs> and you know, it, that that's just kind of cool because because even at its core, this dude who is a genius at everything is trying to figure out the last thing how to be a genius at, which is to be a father. Um, right, and then I'll, again, in Apocalypse War, yeah, when he says to him as he steps down off that damn throne or off that floating chair thing, yeah. whatever. He says to him, look, I used to let you win. Yeah. I'm not yeah. holding back no more. Yeah, yeah. so so it just, it, I, I, I love that. And also, um, again, the, I, I know it's going to hurt, like, the Mr. Regular, but, man, they just played Nightwing in every single... As often as they could. Vandal. In every single movie that Nightwing's in, they play that dude. <laughs> as often as they could. Like, I don't know what it is that the DC writers have against <laughs> Dick Grayson. Dude, I, I, I feel bad. Cause I, I was hoping like, even in Apocalypse World, I was like, yeah, oh, they did that to that dude? <laughs> like, I guess they keep making up for it by letting him have sex with everybody? Right, 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 right. So he, he's just like, well, um, I mean, that's saying something, but I had sex with Bad Girl, um, Selena, and Harley Quinn. But dude, they, and like, Starfire, and like, like he just yeah. go down the list, and Dove, and like he just go down the list. Well, I was waiting for him for for for, for Dick to say that he had sex with the alligator dude <laughs> or whatever that, that Killer Croc, the, the killer, <laughs> with killer Croc. I was like, okay, I, I'm not surprised. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so <laughs> those are for those are that's my answer for those two. But that's I, I look. I would say this. In the reboot of the new DC Universe, please give Dick some props. I know it's Me Too and BLM, but give Dick some prop in the new in the new DC Universe, please. <laughs> like, I mean, at the very least, could you kill him a little longer, dude? And, and, and don't don't let no. All right, Watcher Man, what you got for us? What just happened? Okay. Did you? Did we just hate on us for talking about Dick Grayson? Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 muted me there, so but I unmuted myself. Hilarious. All you, right. You you knew he was gonna get something in, so he had to. I thought scheme hatchery, man. Yeah. So the uh, with regard to the fathers and the sons, the the Batman's, I, I get why they're there. I get why they're on your list. They were they were awesome movies, and it was cool to see that dynamic in particular between Damien and Bruce they were constantly at odds because Bruce felt some type of way about being drugged and finding out that he had a kid Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like he felt the proverbial some type of way but at the same time he also had Alfred as an actual father figure sitting Mm -hmm. there going all right now be a father right so he he wanted to be a grandfather right like he had a legitimate dichotomy in his head. He had a legitimate I don't know what to do. Like I don't necessarily want to have this kid that's being thrust upon me. Just but, trying to fight crime, but okay. Right. But at the same time, 
Uh, another thing I love about Batman and Damien is the fact that anytime Talia comes in, they're just she just refers to him as beloved. It's kind of like how much mm-hmm. um, Nissa Al Ghul, whatever, just show up and talk to Oliver Queen, <laughs> just husband. That cracks yeah. me up. Like that part's funny to me personally, but you know. But their uh, their dynamic has always been so interesting because it's a completely different dynamic than him and Dick. And even to see their to see Damien's growth from Son of Batman all the way up to Apocalypse War, where he's now referring to Dick as his brother. Yeah. Like that yeah. shit's that shit was crazy. When I heard him say it the first time I was like, Ert, you can't stand that dude. <laughs> like you hate it, dude. He's like, no, I had to try. He's my brother. Like I had to try and bring him back. And and, and and do people ever give a little shout out? Like the one little thing that, that always stays in my mind is like, I think it might be at the end of either Batman versus um, Robin where um, Bruce is talking to Dick and he's just like, there is no nine year old on the planet like Damien. <laughs> you know? And so that's a lot of weight for this kid who's probably like maybe 11 or 12 by the time all this is happening. That's a lot of weight for a 12 year old to have to deal with, dude. You know, yeah, that's kind of true too. Yeah, like, how old was Dick when when Damien showed up? Like, honestly, like how old do we think he is? What, how old do we think Dick was? Yeah, man, Dick was in his twenties. It felt like Dick was in his twenties, like early twenties, if something. You know, so if, late- if you if you want to legit do the timeline for it, you know, All right? So I would say like nineteen to twenty one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right, college age kid. Yeah, I think that's I think that's it. Like, like consider him college, you know. Fair enough. I mean, you could you could you could flip it and say there ain't no college person that's like Dick. <laughs> this is true as well. <laughs> Batman, what's up with you? <laughs> so, regular Scott, you and I both have Hush on our list, and we have him relatively high. I had a number one. You had a number two. What is it about Hush that did it for you? The only reason Hush wasn't number one is because I didn't like the ending, um, which I won't give away. I I think that's one of those times they should have just stuck to the comic mm-hmm. instead of trying to be cute. But um, I, 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 think, <laughs> I, think, I think the best stories they put out are the ones where they just stick to the comics. Like one of my favorite DC animated movies, period, is The Dark Knight Returns. Mm-hmm. And it's just because they, they stick to the comics, the, 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 the vocabulary is from the comics. That's, I mean, that's mainly why I really enjoyed Hush. I, I enjoyed seeing uh, the, the, the vast array of characters. I like how they they weaved in the continuity of the universe into everything so it all still fit in the universe. Um, I, I just think it was really well done. The animation was a little bit different in this than the rest of them. It kind of stuck out a little bit more, so I like that as well. Just a few different aspects like that. Um, you know... Obviously, they Dick Grayson can't catch a break, so I'll get I'll get to why I had Judas contract on my list as well. But um, yeah, that that's the main reason why Hush is so high on my list. It it stuck to the source material. The only reason it's not number one is because I just the ending fell flat. What about you? So I had it at number one for a couple of reasons. Number one is well, Batman's my favorite. Just point blank period he's my favorite and so to get to see all of basically his entire rogues gallery was in that movie and all of them were being manipulated some way and doing whatever that everybody was involved somehow i also really 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 enjoy the romantic chemistry between batman and catwoman yeah it's good like i've always loved of all of his of all of batman's girls like of all of them, from Vicky Vale all the way up to Talia Al Ghul, Selena Kyle, like what do you name them all? Like him and Selena's relationship was always the most like an actual courting mm, in totally. a real shitty way, considering she was a criminal and he was a crime fighter, but he kind of like always found a way to let her go. <laughs> he kind of always found a way to make sure she didn't go to jail. And he, well, she always found the way to make sure she was semi-captured and trapped. Right. 
And then, you know? but then at the same time, when I saw Hush, the way she protected his body initially, where mm-hmm. like where Batgirl showed up and she had, she was like, "Hold, whoa, look, man, he's hurt. Take him somewhere." <laughs> mm-hmm. Like he's hurt. Just get him. Take him somewhere. But I wasn't trying to hurt him. Like I didn't do this. So like it was always just a. I, I enjoyed that. Their back and forth was always interesting to me. So I have a the, the random segue. I have a freaking book that I walked into a Barnes and Noble one day, and anybody who knows me knows that I wear a bunch of comic book related T shirts and things. And so I had on some Batman something and some Batman Chuck Taylors, and the dude behind the counter was like, "What are you looking for?" I was like, "I don't know. I'm just kind of in here." And he looked down at my shoes and looked at my shirt, and then he said, <laughs> "I got something for you." And he took me to a book called Batman and Psychology. Oh, oh yeah, that's a great one. So, reading the relationships, yep. the 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 part of the book that stuck that stuck out to me most was his relationships with the women in his life. You know, Talia Al Ghul cheated. If she didn't drug him and brainwash him and do all of that, I feel like him and Talia could have actually been something. Mm-hmm. Barbara was always too young. Vicky Vale was always too normal. Selena was, uh, he, she was always his best match. Mm-hmm. And so, again, in Hush, to see their, them, them actually make something of that made me happy. Well, well, there's a great run of, uh, a Batman comic where it's like the bat and the cat and and they they actually have like their relationship and um Catwoman has a fights um Taya and like she's 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 brutal but there's a there's a great scene where they jumps they jump into the future where bat like Bruce is on his deathbed you know he's old he's just dying of old age and um, he's with the he's with the cat, you know, and it's just it's, they talk about what, how they first met, their first date, and it's it's a it's a real cool story. They have a they, they deserve a good history. Like um, the, the first time they met, Alfred said, "Hey, you should you should wear um this little neck brace just in case." And he's like, "Okay, I'll do it." And S- Selena like basically hung that dude and if he didn't have the neck brace on he'd be dead so she was like oh okay he's smart yeah so it's it's tough you know like i like the way that those two they i like the way that their seduction their romance worked yeah like it was pretty 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 textbook from beginning to end the way that they actually ended up together it was pretty romantic mm-hmm. and i'm a you, romantic you your one, heart you me too even from year one when they met you know yeah so <laughs> That was the the main reason why I had Hush at number one was because of Batman and his relationships. They were on full display. Mm-hmm. That and I love the fact that Davy had called her a harlot. <laughs> that shit had me dying. He was like, "Yeah, we got to work on your vocabulary." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm with you on that. <laughs> so that was why I had Hush where I had Hush. Now, we all have one that's different completely. Well, Oz has three that are different. So, Judas Contract. Tell me more about Judas Contract, regular. Uh, For all the reasons that you both have discussed why Dick Grayson was not represented very well in this universe, the Judas Contract is one of the few times where Dick Grayson is allowed to be presented as he should be and that is the leader of the titans and um they do a good job with deathstroke there's a great scene where he attacks dick grayson Mm -hmm. and like i'm pretty sure he's like in his underwear and flip-flops or something ridiculous like that and he's fighting him at the top of this building that's really cool scene um they definitely take some liberties with the story um it's one of my favorite um teen titan stories is the judas contract so I was really looking forward to this. But they do, Dick Grayson definitely gets his due in this one. He's shown as a great leader. Um, Starfire, I thought, was uh, really well in this as well. So this is, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed this one a lot. This was a lot of fun for me. It's good to see Dick cool. Grayson in a nice, good light. Yeah. That makes sense. Because he's certainly not in a good light with for the other, like, 
10 movies. So, I, see, I don't good. Think bad blood to me, I don't think that's that bad, because who does beat Batman? He lost to Batman. Like, I can't be that mad that he lost to Batman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I, I just I just hated the whole Batman versus uh, Robin where, like, Dude, the the owls like spike that dude through his arms and legs and about to drag that dude off. Well, that whole that whole movie should have been about Dick Grayson to begin with. It was supposed to be, but yeah. Um, they just knew he was. They just knew he was a weak character, so they decided to do Damien anyway. So it's fine. Shots fired. For real. War is just a simple. Let's introduce everybody. Let's have a big battle. And for me, sometimes that works. You don't need to be over, you know, make the plots real difficult. Let's just keep it real simple. And there's always something intriguing about watching superheroes meet for the first time. And it's cool seeing them react to Batman, especially like the Flash and them like, oh, it's Batman. It's Batman. Like he's like just and it's it's still like jarring because he's just a guy. And he's always yeah. the one that everybody's like, wow, like, he's real. He's real, you know. And it, I, I appreciate that aspect. So that's why war is so high. I, just little things in that movie that really kind of stand. Like Superman and Wonder Woman where they kind of, Wonder Woman sees him in a different light. He's like, oh, look at you. You're just as strong mm-hmm. as me. I like you. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Little things like, little interactions like that throughout. Flash and Green Lantern have a great chemistry off the bat. Like, I, I really yeah, they're they're homies. Like they <laughs> they do oh, homie oh, stuff the whole time. <laughs> well, well, the, the you know the Flash and Green Lantern that's taken from the old Brave and the Bold, so that's a really good homage to that. So. They made me laugh a bunch. Just the, but I agree with you a hundred percent. Everybody that saw Batman sort of fanboyed for a second. Was, oh my god, it's really him. <laughs> or, 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 or 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 when Batman's just like literally. Being the human detective that he is, and he's just like, mm, let's see what this. Let, let me see what I can do with this ring. So that I just love that part. So, yep, that made me laugh. And then the the, <laughs> the other thing that was really funny to me was him being like, yeah, Clark. So and so. Is it, wait, you know who I am? He said, huh? What he what he X rays visits him? He goes, huh? Never would have guessed that. Like I know that's I'm, I'm good at what I do. Basically, <laughs> yeah. I'm good at stuff. <clears throat> yeah, and Green, or Green Lanterns were like. Hey, careful, Barry. He's going to be an asshole. He's like, oh, yeah, you do spot on great work. <laughs> um, so we, we touched on the two Batmans. Uh, let's let's touch on the – we can do these kind of simultaneously. Uh, the two su- – you each picked one of the two Supermans that kind of coincide with each other. Um, Reign, of Super- Reign of the Supermen is pretty much a direct sequel to the death of Superman. Um, you know, I, I – uh, Macho Man, we can start with you on this one. Then Oz will go directly to you. Uh, what made the reign of Superman stand out over the death of Superman? For me, it's comic nostalgia. This was right in the heyday of me learning how to care for my comics. Mm-hmm. So this was first figuring out how to bag and board. Why do we do it? Why do we do this, that, and the third? How do we store them? Do I need a comic book box? And this is coming on the heels of my dad finally like opening up and introducing me to the comic book store and all of the other stuff. And me seeing the way that my dad was keeping his stuff. I'm like, dude, you're not even taking care of them. Mm-hmm. So everyone that I bought from that point forward... I made sure that I took care of. I made sure that I bought duplicates of. So, like, I have all of the new Superman. And when Superman came back in the white package, whereas the death of Superman was in the red package with the blood dripping from the ass, I remember I bought two of each of those so that I could open and read one and still bag and board it. (laughs) You know what I mean? But the reign of the Superman, what I enjoyed most about it was, A... This whole universe, other than Diana, the most gangster woman in this universe is Lois Lane. I know. She's gangster in every time you see her. She's doing something G. Every time you see her. So, like, even when she ran up on uh, Superman and, um, or Clark and Diana having lunch at that diner in war, she was like, oh, yeah, so, so, oh, y'all are on a date. 
My bad. Anyway, Clark, we got to work. Got to... Yeah. <laughs> like, we're right back to it. Just, oh, okay. Y'all on a date. I didn't even know. Okay. But uh, The Reign of the Superman, I enjoyed that thoroughly because it gave me John Henry Irons. Yeah. It gave us the little half Lex kid, uh, the half Lex, half Superman kid who cracked me up because he was, he kind of reminded me of what Booster Gold would be if he would have come out early. Yeah. You know, if Booster Gold didn't come from the future. If Booster Gold was actually in our time, I feel like that's who that little super kid would have been. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the the I enjoyed the reign of the Superman for all of the different aspects we got to see of each one represented a different part of Superman, basically. Mm -hmm. So the Eradicator was, you know, he was the pure justice and pure strength. Um, Superboy was more of the human, like he was, he was easily, he could react to other people. That was what he was about. He was about people. He was about attention. He was about making sure <clears throat> that he was well known. Mm -hmm. And then, and John Henry Iron was literally the man of steel. <laughs> so all of those together, that, that was why I enjoyed that more than the death of Superman. Cause like once you create a doomsday that can break Superman, like in reality, who wins? Like you can't win anymore. <laughs> like he broke Superman. It's over. We should figure out like it's and it's immune to kryptonite. This doesn't make any sense. Right. Like Batman is sitting there going, I don't know what to do with this. So yeah, when Batman was just I and I liked um, that because Batman was just like, I'm over my head. Let me just look and see what I can like kind of tactically command people to do right like batman had to, to revert but at the same time oz you loved the death of the superman like why did you love death as opposed to rain because i saw justice league members getting like beat the hell up um you know they're trying i that's maybe that's the reason why i just like the fact that like doomsday was going through everyone and um and I still like, you know, I still am a fan of the death of Superman just because of like this overpowered monstrosity still can die. You know, the more I, it's weird. It's like a, a fascination with the immortal that still knows that he he has mortality. Um, yeah, I, I that's why I appreciated the death of Superman over the reign of Superman. Regular, you got any thoughts on the Superman? This, I, I think this kind of double feature thing was better than the last Death of Superman that came out. And, um, so oh, I, yeah, absolutely. I think it has that on it. Um, I mean, it's 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 good. I, I'm not a Superman guy. You, you know, and you would think that a movie like this, especially where he's getting pulverized and whooped up on, would be the one where I'm like all for it and stuff, but to me it just it really illustrates how it almost illustrates how helpless the just like what would the what would the Justice League do without Superman? Like that that movie to me illustrates how overpowered Superman really is because there's no way the Earth would have been destroyed if Superman wasn't around when Doomsday hit. Yeah, but see, but the thing is like this: if there was no Superman, then there was no Doomsday. So it's like going, it's like saying, if there's no Batman, what would Gotham do? They'd be in a better place because there wouldn't be this crazy Batman rogue gallery either. We we can say that though, but there would be some other intergalactic. Well, well then you know what? Even before Doomsday, we would have got Darkseid. They're not beating Darkseid without Superman. I mean, just, well, just in that continuity, they're not beating Dark Side without Superman. Yeah, but see, you know, the, the th but <clears throat> the thing that they that they underplayed in all this is that again, I know there's fire and stuff, but Martian Manhunter is just as lethal as Superman is. Yeah. All right, look, look. Yeah. You, 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 you have you you have your powered folks. So you got you you have um. Here in my world, I see it as this: if you don't want to have a Superman. But you still have like uh, the the Daxamites, which are the another version of superpowered people that are under a red sun. 
you know, you have the you have Martian Manhunter. But that that's not that's not Superman is not the issue. It's overpowered characters. I don't want another overpowered character to fill Superman. That's the point. That's why I don't like Superman. Well, think about that. So yeah, if you're saying, do- <clears throat> saying Martian Manhunter is just as strong, that's not going to make me like him or want him to fill that. Oh, I know. I, I I dig it, but then the problem with like the overpowered overpowered characters is like you have to have an over, overpowered villain, and so like Doomsday sucks. <laughs> Yeah, Doomsday was kind of one of the worst villains. Ever. I, I I hated Doomsday because it's like, oh, so literally, if you said that to me though, would be the type of creature. That's the type. Of, that's when I when I think of unstoppable. That's the type of creature I think of. Somebody who just is out of control and like literally has no control over what they're doing. They're just doing that to me. Is yeah. Unstoppable. So that's why like I can. It would make sense that he would be the monster that is so un like unstoppable. Yeah. I just hated Doomsday because it just felt very cheap. It felt cheap for a couple of reasons for me back because I'm old and I'm, I'll admit I'm old. I got my AARP card the other day. Um, <clears throat> Doomsday came out, which is like this m- overpowered, mutating, you can't destroy him. Doomsday was out, like, it felt to me like right about the same time when like, the Sentinels and Nimrod was coming out for Marvel, you know? And so I was just like, oh, are you? Okay, you're just trying to like you know pump up some steam for 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 DC with that, um, and and he was just like it just he was very annoying because once they had this crazy person called Doomsday, they had to make these stupid origins for him, and there was like a ton of different Doomsday origins that came out. I was just like, this is weird, you know. So I, I was not a fan of Doomsday at all. That makes sense. I, 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 I wonder what would happen if you would really said the death of Superman if you would have had like Lex Luthor kill him and do the ramifications of that. No, yeah, that would have splintered the world into a different direction, though. You know, yeah. Like they can. One thing that I do love that DC's done and that they've done consistently is that they started the multiverse idea mm-hmm. way early way early there was always an earth too there was always an earth you know what i mean they so they could always just be like all right so this whole time we were looking at earth 27 and and they had to because there's like the silver age um captain carrot and the zoo um crew whatever and so they had to explain all that so yeah i that was i love that yeah if it was one of the more brilliant things DC did, because now they can do almost literally whatever they wanted and marvel caught on to that a little late mm-hmm but that it's something that they can, they'll always be able to just do what they want and be able to blame it on a different earth. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with Doomsday in Doomsday in this universe versus Doomsday in a different universe, um, I don't know that they would have been that. I think the Doomsday would have still come around. It makes sense to me that they would have done Doomsday to combat the Sentinels and all of the overpowered things that were going on in. Marvel, mm-hmm. just so that they could stay relevant. Yeah, and competitive at that point. So that makes sense, though. Mm-hmm. Love it. I guess. Um, so now let's talk about the worst movie in this hmm. uh, particular universe continuity. Did you say what your Did you say what your number one movie was? Yeah. Yeah. yeah his was Flashpoint. Okay. Now and 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 why? Uh, well, I, I kind of touched on it. I, I like, you know, well, actually, West Coast kind of touched on it. I like that it was the beginning and the end, and I really like the Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne story and all that. That's really cool. The note is really cool. Um, it's just a great. It's again, stick to the story, stick to the comic. You can't go wrong. You know, it's a classic story. All you got to do is just put it in the animation. Make a couple changes here and there, but just put the story in the animation, and you got something. So, it's it's a great story, really. I guess that's the I guess that's honestly the answer. Is it's a great story. It's just adapted it so. Yeah, it really actually is, and I'm not. Uh, the more I realize how how much how often the Flash breaks the universe, the more irritating he gets to me. But it, it, another the way overpowered. they did. Yeah, significantly overpowered. Yeah, like this, yeah. but he was. I mean, eventually he started. He started as what a speedster, and then all of a sudden he could time travel. Mm-hmm. 
and change things in the past. Like, okay, whatever, whatever. Like that yeah. is by definition SOP. Yeah. Now talk about a super crazily overpowered person because he could just wake up and be like, mm, I had oatmeal. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the past and have scrambled eggs. This is like what? Yeah, right. that you that dude what? right there. You know what I want? I wanted grits. I didn't want oatmeal. You know what? I want to have sex with bad girl on top of a roof. I might okay. can pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, b- before we get to that point, though, Wonder Woman Bloodlines was my number five. Mm-hmm. And it was my number five because I think it was the only time that I've ever seen Diana as human. Um, explain yourself. She was another, there's OB, like they're the... The Justice League is OP. Just point blank, period. They are all OP. Uh, except for Batman, who is who has all the toys. But I feel yeah, like if, yeah, if but like what, Batman and a, Iron Man OP fought... Human. Right, but I feel like... That's what I'm saying. I feel like if <laughs> Batman and Iron Man fought, Batman's gonna win. Right, right. Like, he's an OP human. But Wonder Woman Bloodlines was the... The, the way that they did that storyline was so cool to me. You know, she do we get to see her leave, which we get on every that's basically her Uncle Ben moment is her leaving. Mm-hmm. But where she landed and had to learn basically how to live in a in the current climate and the current society and the current culture. She learned and spent years doing it. Like they didn't the, the montage they gave didn't really trip on the fact that like that was years that went yeah. by. Because the girl she met when she that became the villain, the Valkyrie looking thing that became the villain, it was yeah. she was she started off at like twelve. And by the time she was done, she was an intern at some tech company. So obviously she was in her twenties. Like yeah. they 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 gave that montage for year for it took her years to figure out how to actually be Wonder Woman, as 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 her as her mother was neglecting her daughter, <laughs> right, straight up, and as she had run away from her mother. But I, it's like it's. I also felt like I had to have something Wonder Woman if I had something Superman and something Flash. You know what I mean? I feel like the originals, the because there's not a Green Lantern uh, movie in this universe, which I felt is like weird. I, Right, it's sad. It is. I mean, there's a Lantern Corps movie that came out around this time, but it's different animation and a different, a whole different thing. But it and it's actually pretty funny. But um, Bloodlines was Medusa has always frightened me as a character in the first place, even mm-hmm. from the old histories. Like, just if she actually got out, we would have a for real problem dealing with a Gorgon. Well, we we wouldn't know what to do, you know. Right, like, and by the time you figure out, you got to look in a mirror. Like, how many statues exist before you figure out to look in a mirror? Yep. Or figure out what she did. She literally blinded herself. So, like, she was just like, "No, I I won't even I won't even be tempted to look." <laughs> Let me just yeah, and that's and that's how and that's how hardcore and raw she was, dude. Yeah, like she showed me the Amazon. The Amazons were gangsters. Yeah. And she showed me what an Amazon and a human, like I got to see both sides of Diana. And like that that was what led me to be like, well, you know, Gal Gadot is Gal Gadot's gorgeous and she's a good Wonder Woman, but I don't think she's big enough. No, cause I, I always envision the, the true Amazonian women, from the if you could take it from DC to the Greek mythology, they were taller than men, and the Amazon women from Greek mythology, they used to cut, like, I think their their left or right breast off so they could be better archers. See what I'm saying? Do. Like, yeah, that is an insane... That, that's raw. That's that is insane. raw. You know, like, they get the same kind of history that the Spartans get. Yeah. You know, where the, the Spartans were, the, they're, they're that legendary fighting force from Greek mythology and Greek history, as it were. The Amazons were supposed to be that legendary fighting force from mythology. Mm-hmm. And it's so I got the, the fact that I got to see the Amazon side and the human side made me, I enjoyed it. So that's why she made my top five. I, I, I respect that. I still, I still feel that Wonder Woman is due a good, good movie. 
you know, but, but Bloodline was close, but I, um, I, I still feel there's a good Wonder Woman story that still needs to be out there. Yep. I agree with that as well. Like, I feel because like she, she, we, there's so much that they can do with her, especially now. Like, now you can just have fun with her. You know, and like, you, you, people do stuff with the, there, there's the Holy Trinity, the, whole, the Holy Trinity, which is like, you know, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. People have done so much stuff with Batman, Superman. They have not done nothing with Wonder Woman yet. Right. Like, Jay wasn't wrong last week. King Van Jay was not wrong when he was like, you know, we could take a uh, Batman break. Yeah. We no, could take true. a Superman break. But Wonder Woman, I don't feel like we need a Wonder Woman break. I feel like you could bring more to the four more di- or different ones. Like, I would love to see another Constantine, for example. Constantine is... is so, my guilty pleasure is the Legends of Tomorrow. <laughs> like it's it's legitimately a guilty pleasure at this point. They make me laugh. They're so ridiculous. But Constantine has been the only thing that's constantly Constantine. Like <laughs> he's been the same dude the entire time. Everybody else turns into whatever they turn into. But he was the same dude in Justice League Dark. He was the same dude in Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. He's the same dude. So it might be time to bring him back. Like Keanu Shout out to Keanu Reeves, but mm-hmm. it might be time to recast him and let him let him have the movie again. Keanu's fine. He's just busy. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that works. Keanu's being John Wick. Mm-hmm. No doubt. All right. Time for the worst movie of the bunch. Uncle Oz, let's start with you. What's the worst movie in this continuity? Jeez. I was going to say um, Throne of Atlantis because there's only a couple scenes that I really dug in that. I seconded immediately. Immediately seconded. Mm-hmm. Um, Good. Uh, mine is uh, Justice League versus the Teen Titans. Mm-hmm. But why? Yeah. Uh, I like Throne of Atlantis. I, I think it's but, of, but why? I think it's one of the <laughs> Aquaman story. It was, it's pretty much an Aquaman movie. And um, it's I definitely didn't think it was worse than the Teen Titans versus Justice League. I think that movie why, awful. Why, why do you think that movie's awful and why do you think the Aquaman movie's good? Uh, well, I, again, I'll say it again. I thought the origin story for the Aquaman movie was pretty good and I just do not like the Teen Titans uh, storyline that they told Like a rehash of Young no, sounds simple enough to me. Yeah. My issue with Throne of Atlantis is pretty much Mira. I think I hate her. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. I think I hate Mira. Do you hate Mira or do you hate Mira because Amber Heard has totally just like. No, I'm pretty sure I hate her as a character. Her. I hated that she was one of the ones that was brought back in Apocalypse War. Like, I hated that it wasn't, like, why wasn't that Arthur? Is that a, another Me Too thing? Oh, yeah, who cares? Like, yeah, exactly. Why would they bring her back? Like, well, well, I know. And when did she water get water powers? powers? Has she always, she's always had water powers? Okay. So, she, she's, she's, so she's always had um, wa- water powers, and um, there was a little thing that was like, so you remember when Aqua Lad, they made Aqua Lad black and he had water powers. There was always this little weird thing. It was like, wait a minute, did Mirror do something with black, uh, with black, black Manta? Manta? <laughs> it, it, yeah, we... it's, it's for real. It, and it's just like, oh, wait a minute, because he did have relationships with an Atlantean to produce Aqua Lad. So I was like, oh. Because not all Atlanteans have the water powers. Right? Just, so, I, I just want to throw that out there. So like what, do you, is, what do you call that under the ocean? Like, is that... <laughs> what is that, kelp fever? Dude, dude, that, that, well, that is some that is too fever much? or something. Right, <laughs> too, too early? Too soon? Dolphin right. love, dude, I'm saying. So, yeah, so so it's, it's interesting, but, man, that whole King of Atlantis... 
the things, the, the two things that I love, not even love, that I tolerated was seeing Superman's like heat vision underwater, and then um, watching Green Lantern actually like tell say when Green when Green Lantern is describing a barrel roll which he learned from the Air Force. I was like, oh, we'll see. That's where he, that's his pilot thing. But other than that, I was like, mm, no, it's okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so- and, and, yo, and, and one more thing. Why does everybody have mommy issues too, dude? I'm just like, dude, just get over this. True that. True that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much our thoughts on the uh, DC Animated Universe, which has come to a close. Um, final question, and then we'll move on to our final blow. Um, oh, wait, hold on. Um, I do believe I get my rant, sir. No, not, not in an hour and 40 minutes. No, you don't. We can save that. Uh, we'll save that for next week. Um, okay, well, I guess I'll be doing that on my final blow. Okay. Well, well, please don't, but save it for next week. We'll do your Killmonger conversation next week. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, okay. We're an hour and 40 in, bro. These people are not trying to hear your rant at this point in the show. Okay. Um, what what would be well? We already know that Man of Tomorrow, the young Superman, almost a Smallville Smallville esque um, animated movie, will be the next one to come out. What movie would you follow that up with in this new DC animated universe? I want to see the Lanterns. Yeah, you can start giving some Green Lanterns some stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean, cause we saw, I, w- I, w- I mean, good Lord, sorry. We saw the Lanterns, but they kind of like poo-pooed on Jon Stewart <laughs> in the last movie. Mm, right. So, you know, like totally no respect. So I want to see some Lantern stuff. I want to see some more, um, no, we, don't, we, we can see more space, but we don't have to see more Apocalypse. That's been done. But we can see some more like of the Justice League doing some like intergalactic adventures. Um we can see a little bit more of, like, oh, dude, and maybe if they're going to get to it, they may actually do some Jimmy Olsen stuff. You know? Um, so, we'll see. As as the Guardian? Oh, well, no, no. As, this, as in, like, I thought Jimmy Olsen wasn't really portrayed a lot in the last, as, like, Superman's buddy and that kind of thing. So, it'd be nice to get back to that kind of like you know, Jimmy Olsen with his ring, with his watch hitting his watch. I need help, Superman. <laughs> That's hilarious. So it, it, it'd be funny to see that. So, you know, other than the Green Lanterns, what I want them to do, which honestly, I'm, I'm pretty sure at some point somebody's going to bring back up. I want them to bring back some of the milestone characters. So yeah, well, like what, Icon or Static Icon. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd like to see. I'd like to see them. Static is like, good because I feel like it would it would play well if mm-hmm. Sony's gonna Sony's gonna push in Miles Morales. There's no reason why DC shouldn't push Virgil Green. Yep. You know, there's no reason why because I mean they're trying with Black Lightning, sorta. Yeah, but you know, sorta. You know, but I feel like they could. You could even have a Black Lightning in there as a, a mentor type as, character. As totally as a mentor for this dude. It will make sense, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, that, and I feel like they're going to have to, because at some point, both Marvel and DC have realized that these characters are so overpowered, sometimes they just got to explain shit with magic. So Constantine needs a movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. our final blows before we do our final blows macho man vandal savage again thank you for being on uh, great topic by the way great topic of conversation so uh it was a pleasure having you on. well as always thank you for having me i enjoy it thoroughly are we are we finally blowing are we is that what we're doing now hey um regular scott wants us to blow all right yeah let's, let's go ahead and do our final blows all right we'll go on ahead and go. Yeah. Go ahead and get those out of the way. All right, let's see. Uh, check out Unsupervised, the spinoff podcast, as we uh, get not as nearly as in-depth into comic book world, but into real world. 
things that are actually going on around that you may be able to actually help and become your own superhero. Yeah. We need that. We do need that right now. In particular, we need for people to step up and in particular, you need to start paying attention and by paying attention, I mean, open dialogue, actually listen when somebody's talking. Mm -hmm. Little things like that. Like Mm -hmm. I closed that show. I'm going to close this one again. Be excellent to each other and treat everybody the way you want to be treated. That's all I got, Scott. Uncle Oz, what you got for your final blow? Uh, My final blow is um, I like to thank West Coast Vandal for being on here. Um, Always a pleasure when you are. Always uh, insightful when you are as well. Um, I think everybody should be doing their homework, and and that's everybody should do their homework. As I talk to my friends, um, colleagues, co-workers, it's amazing to me uh, during this time in the 21st century how people are saying that they don't read you know, and that they never heard of this book when they're growing up or they never heard of this book. And I think it's upon yourself as an adult, you know, to 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 take knowledge when it's given to you and to, and to search for it. Um, there, there are very simple things you can do. I'll, I'll tell everybody what they can do. And I'm going to start doing this um, during our podcast um, as a service to myself and other people. Check out check out Jane Elliott. Um, Read about Angela Davis and what her thoughts are on what it means to do actual police reform and actual prison reform, too, Um, because both of those go hand in hand. And last thing about this, we're all nerds, but when you hear people say defund the police, don't just be reactionary as a yes or no, but figure out what it means. Defund the police doesn't mean we're taking this away, but it means this. An aspect of that is all any money that they were going to give to that police department, they will send it to social services because that's how you stop crime. The police aren't there to be social workers and everything else. They're there to stop this. So if you can be a bridge for that, because they're overworked. So if we can be a bridge for that, let's help them so they don't have to put their, their knees on someone's neck. You know? So when you hear about defund the police, Go research it yourself. Don't listen to MSNBC, CNN, Fox News. Take the information for yourself and then start the argument. Don't let other people fill your head with stuff because everybody's got their own agenda. That's my right. blow. I'm, I'm about to take a page out of Oz's book. Along those same lines, <laughs> community, <laughs> become a part of your community. Yes, yes. Because community prevents more crime than everything else. Yeah. yeah. The old adage is what? It takes a village to raise a child? That's the old adage? Well, some adults also need a little additional help, and it takes the whole village to help them. Yeah, and so so where the police come in, the community used to police each other until things got a little out of control for reasons. So just, yeah, I, I respect that totally, totally, yes. Shout out to Young Supervisor Spinoff Podcast. Definitely check that out. Check out everything on the Defile Life Podcast. One Eye Shut, the flagship, uh, Speak the Truth, Black Gumbo. You got a little bit of everything. So uh, check out the Defile Life Pods. Check out the gear, Defile Life gear. We got some brand new tees, I Can't Breathe. We got all that. Make sure you're checking that out. Um, actually, I will I will plug another podcast. Man, I've been really feeling the nerd can't see these last few weeks. Um, they've been talking a lot about the technological side of things and very in-depth also uh villains demand they put a great one out with phoenix from gears of war versus general crane um in a battleground setting so that's a very good listen so there's two for you right actually there's three for you right there unsupervised nerd cantina and the villains demand um so that's my final blow ah let's tell everyone we'll talk to them next time um as usual uh good people peace and chicken grease Y'all have a good time because we're going to have a good time until we talk to y'all next time. Peace. Love each other. Beep, 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 beep.
Pow, 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 pow. This is Defy Life. Welcome to the Defy Life Podcast. Join JR, Thomas, and Al as they take on topics in sports, politics, current events, family, and more. Insightful, hilarious, always unique. New episode every Wednesday. Powered by the Defy Life Podcast Network. Listen at defylifepods.com and everywhere else your favorite podcasts are available. If you're not rocking with Defy Life, what's your life about? 